This is what people do. Let's take a look at this uh, uh, hokey pokey video. The, you want to talk about every, the news right now, by the way. Is there anything more disturbing than the news trying to do feel good stories? Like, I am one of these people that go, the news is too negative. But then you go outside and you you realize that it's kind of accurate. It doesn't mean their targets are, you know, always valid or, mm. but there's a lot of fucked up shit happening. So now here's how I measure how much fucked up shit is happening. Not even the negative stories, which we all know already, or the um, panic. You know, the news is always in a panic about everything. It is, what is crazier than the negative stories is the feel-good stories have gotten so bad and so insane that you genuinely, because this is all they got, this is all they have to take your mind off the plague and the impending economic collapse, the eviction moratorium, people living in their cars, violence in the street, gun to your head at lunch. We'll show you that video later. People eating lunch on the street, gun to your head, armed robbery, take your money, riots, corrupt uh, politicians, corrupt police, everything. In order to take your mind off that, they go to the feel-good uh, stories. And the bag of stories that they pick are so disturbing. In in fact, they're actually more disturbing than the hell that we're all used to by now. We're all used to the hell by now. 27 years old, healthy, COVID, dead. In an hour. I mean, that's all the stories they do about COVID. They're like, he was a personal trainer and he ran up the mountain every day. He rescued dogs and he had a beautiful wife and child. And now he's dead. COVID. And you're like, fuck. And you look at the guy, he's ripped. He's on like a mountain. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got three kids and a dog. It looks weirdly photoshopped. I'm like, does he exist? Is this real? But who knows? And it probably is. But, you know, we, we're all used to that right now. We're all used to that horrible, like, auto fatalities. We're all used to, like, you know, street racing. Like, someone just sitting in a light. And then these two <laughs> demon children, street racing, just kill that person. And that person, like, you know, it'll it'll be like, she was waiting to make a left into the, you know, parking lot of a Walgreens. And two street racers killed her and her baby. <laughs> and so you're used to that. You're like, fuck. But you're used to it. It makes sense. You go, yeah, yeah, that's that. Random acts of violence. We get it. You know, Waffle House brawls. We, we... But the feel-good stories have become so insane and disconnected <laughs> from reality that they are now more troubling. You find yourself staring at them, and the news doesn't even know how to do a positive story anymore. First of all, they all almost... they All the feel-good stories involve people dying or about to die. Just to give you an idea of the feel-good stories. Yeah. They involve... Terminal disease or the elderly. Mm -hmm. Those are the that's the feel good hour. That's the happy minute at the end. Like a make a wish kid, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Or or you know, we all know the one where it's like he walked 30 miles every day to work <laughs> and everybody bought him a Saturn. <laughs> we got everyone in his job to donate, you know, fifty dollars and we bought him a used Saturn. That when it breaks down, he can't even get parts for it because they don't make Saturns anymore. He'll be walking again in no time, but put it and let's make it go viral on Facebook because it's still a great country where we care about our workers. Happy Labor Day. We all know that story, right? Like this person had no <laughs> shoes. It'd be like, this person had no shoes. And instead of going, why do they not have shoes, right? Or they, mm. they work every day. Why do they not have a car? You're supposed to go, well, all's well that ends well. He got a fucking... 1998 Saturn, and he'll be thrilled now. Um, but play this feel-good story, because this is about... Uh, I'm not even going to tell you what it's about. Let's just enjoy this together. I'll periodically stop it to try to explain to you what's going on, because I've watched it several times. This is the good people at where? CBS? I think this is CBS Evening These News. These are the good people at the CBS yes, Evening yes. News trying to take your mind off all of the other horrors with this 
piece of fun and light, which, by the way, this is heavier than anything I've ever seen. Opinions vary when it comes to music. One person hears a symphony, another person hears noise. But CBS's Steve Hartman discovered a song that can get a whole neighborhood dancing. Here's tonight's On the Road. On the Road. So already, already, you know it's rough. On the Road never means anything good, right? On tonight's On the Road. Yeah. That means, like, we're really out there. That's CBS's way of saying, we are out there. <laughs> In the sticks. <laughs> this is how much contempt they have for people that don't live in like LA or New York. Yeah. They're like on the road. And by on the road, we mean somewhere in hell. We're broadcasting somewhere in hell. On the road, you know, where people are just eating each other's corpses. <laughs> We've sent one of our reporters out there to bring you a story that is completely insane. Dancing days are done. Phyllis Brinkerhoff of Prairie Village, Kansas, says she's not too old to appreciate a sick beat. In fact, Mrs. B, as she's known in the neighborhood, is obsessed with one dance song in particular. It's just a fun, joyous song. You put your right arm in. The hokey pokey. And you know how when you love a song, you want your friends to love it too? Well, that's why Mrs. B gave her neighbor, Melanie Mendries, a hokey pokey CD and started talking about the song So this constantly. is in Kansas. It's an old woman. I can see her name pop up on my phone. Who's obsessed with the hokey pokey. And I pokey. just thought, oh. It and it is, it's probably like a member of the Fred Phelps church. <laughs> like this woman, they're probably conveniently leaving out that like she protested like marine funerals <laughs> with the God hates fag sign on Oak Dag for the majority of her life in Kansas. But now, but listen to this. She's obsessed with the hokey pokey. So this is the feel good story at CBS. They found a woman who is mentally ill and obsessed with a very annoying song for children, the hokey pokey. She can't get enough of it. She's insane. They found an insane woman. <laughs> who's obsessed with the hokey pokey. Continue this. It's the hokey pokey. Hi, this is Phyllis. Mrs. B left uh, dozens of messages. Hello. I really do need to talk to you. Urgently pleading her case. CD I gave you, are you hooked on it yet? And I just would always say, not quite yet. Melanie's so reluctant. So this woman, this old bat, Gives this neighbor a CD of the Hokey Pokey and then harasses her and keeps calling her and goes, are you hooked on the Hokey Pokey yet? This is a story that's supposed to make you feel good about the direction of the country. This old bat gives this woman a Hokey Pokey CD because she's like an MK Ultra victim or something. This is a crazy behavior. It's crazy behavior. <laughs> and then she calls this woman repeatedly, harassing her and her child, going, are you hooked on it yet? Are you listening? Are you listening? I mean, this is like the behavior of Sirhan Sirhan, who was activated to kill Bobby Kennedy, probably by the hokey pokey. They started playing that. He blacked out, and then he came to in the kitchen of the Ambassador Hotel, standing over a corpse. <laughs> Me and Ray were laughing so hard. They're like, Ethel Kennedy, what are the older Kennedys? I forget, maybe not Ethel. Mm -hmm. Somebody wrote a letter to keep Sirhan Sirhan in prison. That's all the Kennedys have left now. <laughs> He's trying to keep this old fucking prison, this old Patsy. That's all they have all left. They have. Yeah. Trying to keep this old Patsy in jail. Let's continue this feel-good bit. Baffled, Mrs. B. You know... Most people don't care really at all for the hokey pokey. Really? Really. I find that very amazing. Do you? <laughs> Still, she knew her crusade was all but lost. <sighs> then one day, Mrs. B happened to mention that her birthday was coming up, her 93rd. And when Melanie heard that, she decided to embrace what she'd been resisting. Or to put it in hokey pokey parlance, she put her whole self in. Ugh. We made copies of the invitation, we rolled them in little scrolls, and we wrapped ribbons around them and traipsed up and down the street. 
You put your whole self So now they have to fattest and have more video of these people was on the hokey lawn pokey trying to do the hokey mouth. pokey and they can't even do it. This is a feel good story about America. So by the way, they went through the neighborhood in Kansas. They have all these people who can't see their feet on the lawn and they, they all can't do the hokey pokey. They can't, they can't even do a child's dance. These are the citizens of America. And they've all come to dance for this old witch. She's doing some black magic ceremony uh, in her front yard. And these tubs of lard can't even get the hokey pokey right. And this is, and just finish this, but again, this is supposed to make you feel like we're on the right track and our, our you know, things aren't that bad. You got an Antifa member far left here. Can you see that? Blue Where? hair, the blue haired little girl. No, I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a blue haired, <laughs> the blue haired girl in Kansas. They get wild. Yeah. They get wild over there. Let, let's see the rest of this. Take it all about. The smile on her face was so big. It doesn't take that much to make someone's day. And I think we could all do a little more of it. Shut up. Because that's Look at this. What's what next? It's all about. Retired flight attendant honors colleagues killed on 9 11. These are the good stories. This is the fun. This is. CBS, retired flight attendant, <laughs> honors people killed on 9-11. That's 30 nice. seconds? Yeah. 30, they've devoted 30 seconds to this. That's 30 too much. Can we play this? Can we? Yeah, play okay. it. Well, tonight, a retired flight attendant is on a mission to honor the flight crews killed in the September 11th attacks. Polly Veneto is walking more than 200 miles from Boston, where United Flight 175 took off from on the morning of the attacks to this, One World Trade Center. And he's pushing no a beverage cart along his three-week journey. Jesus Polly actually knew some of the crew members who were killed, and he wanted to honor them. His By trip is helping to raise cart? money for the families of 9-11 victims. Thank you, Polly. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Polly. Good luck. Well, there's that. That's a feel-good story that's uh, happening.